yeah, this is a, this is a complete kit today. Um, these are the earrings, everything, all of the beads are vintage. I built this kit, so I'm trying to make them so they're really, really worthwhile for you ladies um, and a great deal. So this one, I used to have um, my boutique back in Illinois. Like these earrings alone that I'm doing, I would probably do for honestly probably like $60, $70. And then the necklace, uh, also probably like, you know, at least $55, $60, especially because of the crystal. So the... Um, the value that you guys are getting with a necklace and earrings, you know, should definitely be above $100. I'm just gonna be using the silicone brush from Colorful Soul. This one's just the um, kind of chisel edge. All right, Moonstone. I always just put everything out on the mat that I'm going to use. I've got some amethyst, ultimate paint, and then fire opal. On my example piece, I'm basically just trying to get like this little edge of purple. Um, just on this scallop edge and I I don't need it to be perfectly um, covered because I really love to make everything look like it's been worn for a long time or it's gone through a lot of um, years chipping I may love to make it look like it's chipped or rubbed off, worn off. So this is going pretty well so far, but you don't have to be perfect about the coverage on this first layer. Also take note if there's any step that you like, like when it's done, you can totally just stop there and do nothing more to it. <clears throat> so like if you like just how this purple little edging looked, you could totally just leave it just like that and call it good. A lot of times with the paint, I think less is more on these just basic painting techniques. Um, it looks better like when you're doing the pour art techniques or anything like that to use lots of paint like whenever you're whenever you're trying to do like um a more literal enamel look that's when it's better to use more paint i always just rub off the extra paint off the end of the brush there now i used the shine cloth first on this um on the frame because I wanted some of the finish down here in the um, main portion of the piece. I wanted some of that to rub off as well. You totally could just use the reliefing block and I am going to use the reliefing block for the final step. Um, the moonstone I'm going to mix with the pink and I probably should have put those together. But I'm just going to pull some of that down. Get a little glowy, sparkly pink action going. This is my favorite thing, like moonstone. Mixing moonstone with literally anything is like it's just the most gorgeous. I could just sit here and swirl around those paints forever. All right. Now I'm just going to 
and it was probably about a one to one ratio that I did there. So if you wanted to drop it out onto your mat, I would do, you know, two drops moonstone to two drops fire opal. And actually this technique would probably work decently well with um, the stains too. Your, the finished look just won't be as pigmented. I'm gonna get some more moonstone and pink going over here. So this is, I probably would categorize this technique as more of a cold enamel technique, even though I'm gonna be rubbing off some of the finish on it. Okay. Now, while this is still wet, I, um, on my original, I went in with some of, like, why I didn't grab a new bottle of paint, no idea. I went in on each of these corners while it's wet, so on the up a little tick of the scallop, so underneath each of the inner flowers, I just kind of did a little dot of fire opal, and I think that it makes it look so cool. It gives it some more depth, and I thought it would be pretty to kind of pull it out. I was noticing on mine that I would have liked it to blend a little more. I just didn't come up with the idea until um, until the paint was already too dry, but luckily this paint is still <clears throat> the perfect wetness. So just rubbing off some of the moonstone that gone on my brush. So the quicker you do this, the more um, flow you're gonna get. So basically just trying to do a little ombre effect. Just trying to hit the very inner corner. And I think it makes it look so much more um, not rustic but it makes it more look more like a flower almost with that like the bright spots. So just keep kind of layering the paint. Sometimes it'll flow out to the edge. Let me pick this up and give you guys a better look. So see how that's almost like a little ombre yeah, I like this much better than my original even. I always do that. I always um, do it one time and then I think of a million things that I would do better on the next. So you guys always get the, um, you, you always get the good version when we're live on the, on camera. Now I'm gonna let this sit for a while because I want it to be pretty dry when I go in to use the reliefing block. And that, for that reason, um, that reason is because I want most of the paint to hang out on my piece. I don't wanna take too much off. All right, definitely waited long enough, probably too long, I forgot about this one on the side that I had done already. I'm going to say probably an hour to completely dry. And then oh, by overnight, you're gonna have a fully enameled, cold enameled pair of earrings. So that looks pretty good to me. I already have some of the goodies from the kit laid out. So I always like to prep all of my things so that way when it comes to assembling the necklace, I can just cruise right along. So I always make all the beads up front and I'm just closing up both of those jump rings 
because as always, we love to use our jump rings as spacers. And I am always doing it. This is also going to be a spacer in between the two, um, two little chips. Got to get my two jump rings that I prepped. Go ahead and string the chip. And then we're going to do the antique copper jump ring and then the second chip. And I just love how organic and cool that little stack looks. So I always um, like mismatch the shapes that I'm going to be putting in a stack like that and then add in jump rings as spacers and you just get the coolest effect. So I just did a little 90 degree angle and another way to add a lot of flair and personality to your necklaces are doing double wraps like that. And it's even fine if your jump ring kind of moves around because it just, it's not gonna fall off because it's smaller than the other two, but it adds that kind of whimsical quality about it. Kind of like you were walking walking around in the forest and just having to, um, having to twirl your wire as you're walking along. Kind of like just, kind of undone looking. All right, going to do a JR45 on the moon and that just fits perfectly right through the moon. So we don't need any fancy bail or anything for the crystal there. So that's ready to go. Now, what else do we have? Okay, we have these cute little melon beads and a paddle bottom pin. I often use my nail, twirling, twirling, twirling. All right, got that nice and centered, ready to go. That's gonna go inside of that cute thing. All right, now you guys have two lengths of chain in your kit. One is a little five opening and this one's 11. And that'll come in handy here in a second. Now, the other thing I'm gonna get prepped is the silk cord. So all I'm gonna do for this each side of your cord is even. So, like on the finished necklace. So I'm just gonna clip this in half, like literally in half. And you could be smart and use scissors or you could just use side cutters like me. Now, sometimes there there's like this little inner tube of, um, here's a better example here of yarn just to make it like puffy and fluffy. And sometimes it sticks out of the end. So go on the side where it's not sticking out because we don't want that white to show um, when we crimp it. So you can kind of push it down in there. And our goal is to just cover it up with these crimp ends. The crimp ends are great. They have this little foot I'll show you that keeps the silk in super strong and it's not going anywhere. I'll show you on the next one. Go ahead and just close them up. Now this side kind of popped out a little bit. So I'm gonna dig down in there and just clip off that extra yarn. Cool. So here on the crimp, you can see here, there's that little foot, and that is what keeps your silk totally in place. I'm getting some extra popping up. Okay, there we go. Okay. So since I already have two painted, 
I'm going to do, and I, since I already have the painted version, I'm just gonna assemble it with the regular for the necklace. Oh, that would be pretty in the center too. I kind of just tossed that there, but that goes up on the chain. All right, so another thing that I do constantly in my jewelry designing is doubling up jump rings. So for this um, piece here, one of the sides um, on the original stamping is a bit small for the JR45. So we're gonna take the bead all and just bore it open a little bit more. The one side's big enough, but it ends up being, if you're looking at it, the left side of that little divot. So we're gonna go ahead and open up that JR45 and slip it through the one side of the hole. You can go ahead and close it up and then get your other. Yeah, doubling up jump rings, again, just completely adds to the whimsical nature of my designs. So please copy me on that if you want to achieve that same look. Okay, open up your JR30 and then slip your two rings through and then you're gonna slip your moon. Now the moon is, you can totally hang it either direction. So keep in mind which way you want it to go. Okay, loving it already. Now, I'm gonna do our little, move those, I'm gonna do our little center which is this cute thing. Now this, we just wanna close. Okay. Going to take our last um, copper JR45 uh, in the kit. And I believe, yeah, this one we have to bore as well. So this time, instead of going on the side here to bore it open, I'm actually going on the center since only one jump ring is going um, through that. Okay, just to get them on and then slip your large etched jump ring and then your, and then your little copper double twirled melon bead. Close that up. Look how gorgeous that's already looking. Okay, there we go. We're cruising along. We've got the pendant portion finished. Moving on, I'm going to get the chain started. So this is our center piece of the necklace. We're gonna think of this as the center of the chain. Now, with this chain style, you have two sides. There's um, one where the wire ends, that's this side, and here is where the end is not showing. You wanna make sure you have this smooth side out. Okay, do the same thing on the other side smooth side out. So that's our center. Now I'm gonna use these oval jump rings. They're copper, antique copper. And I'm gonna add that there to the chain. Face your shell down and we are cruising. Do you see why I do it? all up front, all the work. So that way you can just bada bing, bada boom, get her done. Okay, here are more JR30s. And again, doing my little doubling action. 
I just love the weight that it adds to your designs. Um, and luckily the crimp ends are the perfect size to fit two jump rings through and my double loop that I did is also big enough for two jump rings to fit through. And I think it just adds like an extra, almost just like, like if you were to have a double ringed chain, it just has a different look. Again, adding to the whimsical nature. Okay, just looking through this part, it's always a little tricky getting the second jump ring through there. So however you need to do it, just do it. There you go. All right, did the same thing here for my little double ring attachment. Now I'm going to add on the pendant with a JR30. I love this without the paint too, oh my goodness. Especially the necklace for some reason. Alrighty, now all we have to do is add on the clasp and we are good to go on the necklace. I'm so excited to see these with a the paint. I have not seen them with paint yet. We did our necklace. Making my piles here. This has been my favorite ear wire lately, is that long, kind of elegant ear wire. So this is everything you get in the kit. Let me move this guy. Give me some space to show you ladies. Okay, let's organize this little pile a little bit. You're getting these gorgeous um, dyed pink shells shell discs oh, i'm already loving it just sitting there that pile of color up there looks amazing this is like the most annoying part to me usually i would just like whoosh, spread all my things out on the mat and just get going but since i want you guys to be able to see everything there whoo gotta wipe my brow quick Two JR 30s prepped and closed because we're going to use that as a spacer. So go ahead and close those guys up. All right. And before doing your bend, um, slip on your jump ring. Now this is fun. Did I just do one? Yeah, I just did one. This is fun because it kind of gives you that gives you like a faux wrapped loop look. So when you do a double turn and then connect it down to the jump ring that you put on, it almost looks like um, a wrapped loop, especially if you were to put two of the jump rings on. I always like to just make sure it's nice and tight. Get your next one going, do your bend. Cool, looking good. All right, let's do our, I'm gonna do these actually next. So this one we do just like we did on the necklace. The double wraps because it's fun to be able to skip the clipping step and just get right to, get right to rolling. Did I do a double roll on this? Yes, I did. Now this double roll also needs to be big enough to hold two jump rings. So make sure you're going a little more towards the middle of your barrel. So gonna grab this JR45 in copper antique and gonna close this up and going to slip on the double looped melon, then the big etched ring and oops did I forget to, yes I forgot to make these holes bigger. Might as well just do them all while you're here. So top, center, here. Uh, flip it around and then you got to do this side since the bottom is getting two jump rings. All right, the JR45 in copper. So three things are going on your JR45 to hang from the center of your frame. The pink on pink. Oh my gosh. 
like the tones of the pink and purple in the shell are perfectly matching each other, like totally mirroring, right? Oh my gosh, I love them in pink. I'm so pumped. Now I'm gonna get the shell added onto the bottom. You totally can just do one too if you prefer, prefer that look, but. Sometimes I'll loop through and then use, I won't try and reach around with the back. If that makes sense, I'll reach through with the front one and um, loop that through. So you don't have to like move your jump ring all awkwardly. Hopefully that made sense. You might have to rewatch that part a couple times. This you also have to um, stretch out a little bit since we're trying to fit two through there. Like, especially with the earrings for some reason, the difference between the pink and the um, brass, like the brass totally just makes it look super like foresty. And then all of a sudden with the pink, they're like the most crazy, mermaid earrings get your oval and we're gonna do our double connection again here onto the blue lace agate you guys are getting some gorgeous little things in your kits i will say so myself again i'm gonna do that thing where i slip it through and then just use the front um To, so you don't have to stretch your jump ring over across the last one. What I have to do is add on my um, ear wire and I'm totally smiling, like geeking out because I get to put these dang things on. Oh my gosh, so cool. This looks like gorgeous and like almost like global and um, kind of more forest and like green, you know, what, what would be the vibe of this? Like a little more Moroccan almost. But then when you put the paint on it, it all of a sudden looks like a mermaid earring. Okay, and then this is the unpainted version of the necklace. So obviously looks awesome both ways. How are you ladies going to do it? Are you going to paint it or are you going to leave it? Because I am absolutely in love with both. I will see you guys soon. Bye!